Let's take a look at Thursday. There were eight games on in the NBA. All the big performances will break them down. Michael Bolton. Oh, yeah. Also, before Michael, I know you're not going to answer anyway. We've got an update, sort of, on the mellow ball. Now, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast, brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyden. Where are we dropping, boys? Tilted Towers? I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com, and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore bball, on TikTok at redrock underscore bball, and on Instagram at locked on fantasy basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That is $150 if your bet wins. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Thank you also for making locked on fantasy basketball your first listen every day. We are free, we're available on all platforms. Bang, bang. Double banger? Yeah, you are. Go and hit the thumb up, ring the bell, subscribe and comment here on YouTube. And after you've done that, go and download the audio. And then audio blokes, you listen through, go watch the video. It's going to be pretty exciting for you. I guarantee you, one of the best things you'll ever do. We're going to talk Thursday. A lot of games on for a Thursday. Eight of them, in fact. We've got some news updates we're going to talk about as well, including the aforementioned Lamello Ball update that's sort of an update that gives us some clarity, but also doesn't. Doesn't that help a lot? Well, that's what the Charlotte Hornets do. But at least we got something. Old mate Steve Clifford. Uh, Steve Clifford looks like Thanos, doesn't he? Anyway, Steve Clifford was out there talking about Lamella Ball. So yeah, he's basically at the same spot that he was two weeks ago. And once again, Steve Clifford is... I don't know if saying the quiet part out loud is the right phrase, mainly because I hate that phrase and it gets overused. But there was a few weeks ago where Clifford was like, our main priority isn't winning. Was, oh, actually, no, 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 no. We actually do want to win. No. He said that, right? And then in this one, he came out and it was like, yeah, Lamelo, it's the same sort of thing. He's out there two weeks ago. I've got to listen to the health guys. Um, Lamelo, he wants to play, but he's um, yeah, he doesn't feel comfortable. Uh, there are a lot of other factors. Yeah, you are trying to lose. They are the other factors. So I think it's getting to a stage. Obviously, it's ridiculous that Ball's played 22 games. I don't know what's actually going on with his ankle. There's no real clarity from this team at all. I don't know if he comes back or not. But the news today, I will not get these right all the time. It's impossible because they cloak everything in uh, an NBA nonsense filter. But I don't think he's coming back. I don't know that. And it is risky to drop. Obviously, a two-game finals week or a two-game playoff week is always a, a, an impediment to his production anyway. I just don't think he's coming back. Fairly confident Mark Williams isn't either. But this franchise, idiots that they are, won't actually tell us, and I don't know why they won't say anything about it. But the update today on Ball makes me think that he isn't coming back. The Grizzlies, speaking of a team that is frustrating to deal with, the Memphis question marks, went through and did a whole preview for tomorrow, said, look, it's going to be pretty weird. They're against the Blazers, expect a lot of nonsense. And then they just out of nowhere ruled out Jaron Jackson. Canard is doubtful. Conchar is doubtful. Gigi Jackson's questionable. I don't know whether they play Friday or Saturday. Or I know Jaron won't play on Friday. Canard and Conchar won't either. Does Trey Jemison get called up? I think he has to. But then does Jaron play on Saturday and Jemison gets G-leagued again? Jordan Goodwin will probably start with Derek Rose out as well. He has to start. But then does he play on Saturday? I don't know. I know that that is a good ad of Goodwin for Friday, but there's no, no Jaron, no Canard, no Rose, no Conchar, maybe no GG. It's going to be a complete mess again. And it will be the same again against Portland on Saturday. A lot of people are excited about Alexei Pokyshevsky. You need to just calm down. I said this already. There's no clear huge role there for him. And they just said he's going to be in the G League for a while. They could have said foreseeable future, so I could have laughed. But he's going to be in the G League for a while. So he's just not going to play. And when he does come in and play, it'll be a small amount, I'm guessing, as a reserve. And there might be a period... April the 3rd through to April the 14th, where they sit Nick Richards with a fake injury and Poku gets 25 a night at that period. But there's no reason, I don't think, for you to go and add and hope that Poku does it all right now. 
The last one is another injury situation that we don't know about, but we know something about it, and that is Andy Wiggins, who's out again for personal reasons. I They said there's no timetable for him to return. Last time this lasted, what, about six weeks last year? I'm not saying that Wiggins is going to be out for the rest of the season, but I am saying you can jack him. Get that garbage out of here! It's always the upside versus the weight value, and Wiggins isn't good enough to deal with waiting. So even if he only misses two more games, that's, I, I, that's okay. I'll drop him or someone else will pop up. It's not a top 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 player. So you very comfortably jack him off. And we hope everything's all right personally, but I think this might be a while, unfortunately. Let's look at the waiver wire. Who have been the most added gentlemen over the last uh, 24 hours? The most added guy has or was Corey Kispert, up 24%. Then, of course, he got benched today. Um, Royce O'Neill up 13. Bol Bol up 10. There was a lot of confusing reporting about Brad Beal and Eric Gordon yesterday. One reporter said Beal was doubtful, then quickly deleted that tweet, and then the Suns came out and said he was questionable. Of course, he was out. He didn't play. Um, that reporter also said that Nurkic was doubtful, but he played. And then Gordon was ruled out. So if you did manage to go and grab, and one of the like legendary listeners of the show, Yuri, I know she was like, I saw that news on Beal and I went and added bowl straight away. Then she regretted it when those guys were upgraded. Well, then they were ruled out again. So Yuri, I think you did all right. And anyone else who did that. So O'Neill up 13%, Bol up 10%, made sense for today. They got a weekend back-to-back as well, so you hold them through that. Andre Drummond up 7%. Last game was obviously awesome from Drummond. Caruso's questionable for tomorrow. I still think Drummond's got a little bit of value, but obviously less value if Caruso plays. Boyan Bogdanovich up 6%. Absolutely no idea why people did that. What was that? Why are we adding Boyan Bogdanovich? That one is one of the... That's, I don't get that at all. Why was he added? He should have been added the other way, like in reverse, like jacked. Get that garbage out of here. And then Cody Martin up 5%. Cool. We know what he is. Get some assists. Get some steals. And Ball's injury probably does sustain a little bit of Cody Martin value there. The most dropped players over the last 24 hours. Number one is Fanta Pants, Kevin Herter. They play Friday, then no weekend game. We know he's up and down. He's a stream guy only. Kelly Linick down 11%. I understand it. I'm not sure I would have immediately done that, considering they've got more games this week. Probably would have held, but that's okay. Andy Wiggins down 10. Totally cool. Andy Nempard down 10. Well, yeah, look, he's been pretty rough. I think he's going to be streamable for sure, while at least while Neesmith is out and while their schedule's good, but that's t- totally okay. The wave pulled De'Anthony Melton down 8%. The news on him was not good. Talked about it yesterday, but I think this is... They said no timeline. That's multiple weeks. That's very clear drop, De'Anthony Melton. Very clear. And the other one's Bruce Brown. He's just not playing enough. Get that garbage out of here. So he can uh, be dropped as well. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. You can bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Go bet on the NBA title. Go bet Rookie of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year. You think Wemby's got a shot of unseating Gobert? I don't think he will, but you never know. You can check it out over on FanDuel. But put that first bet on. Just do a, do a money line on a uh, someone playing the Hornets, I guess, and see what you can get out of that. Get those $150 in bonus bets back. Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. And don't forget to gamble responsibly. Okay, so that's those games done. Yeah, they're done. Let's... um. Let's go to the first one. Well, that's not the game, so that's all the other info done. Let's go to the first game. And it was the Bucks in their second matchup in three days against the Hornets. This one was a little bit more lopsided early, but it didn't end up like the 40-point victory last time out. The Bucks win at 111-99, the final score here. Yanni had 24 and 10. Bob Portis played a lot, though. 28 minutes for him. 10 and uh, 14 and 10 with four assists and three steals. That's because Lopez played just 25. I don't think there's anything there to suggest, well, Lopez is going to see his minutes dropped and Portis is going to bump him up or anything like that. Just a weird rotational choice and that's okay. Lillard, we thought, was getting things back on track because he was, and then he has 17 points on 36%, which is rough. He also only had two assists. The two steals are nice, but just a, a step backwards. While Leaky Beasley had 19 with five threes, we know what he does. 
19 points, five threes. And then it's two rebounds, zero assists, zero steals, zero blocks, and zero free throws. I think, has this man topped five free throw attempts this season? I need to check that out because I know he was running at one of the more comically low um, free throw attempt rates. Let's see what he's gotten up to. Remember when I uh, jinxed Luke Kennard in terms of missing free throws? Let's see. How, what's your guess? He has taken... Oh, he's taken 25, actually. That's way more than I thought. Leaky. Free throw merchant. The most non-ethical hooper there is. Uh, Pat Connaughton. Why did I mention his name? He had 11 points with two threes. And Jay Crowder started once more for Middleton, who's likely going to be out tomorrow as well. Four points for Crowder, who is obviously washed. For the Hornets, Trey Mann. Still not really blowing up. And let me again rephrase this about Trey Mann. I don't want it to ever get twisted about my thoughts on Trey Mann. Trey Mann should be rostered. Absolutely should be rostered. Do I think Trey Mann is good? No, I don't at all. Not even remotely close. I don't think he's good in the slightest. And you're sort of seeing that with his production, but look, he's been okay. Nine, seven, and four with two steals on 40%. It's okay. Grant Williams had a good game, 17, 5, and 3. I can't trust that at all. Streaming, but that's about it. While Brandon Miller's really copping the efficiency hit at the moment, 21 and 7 is good on the surface, but 1 assist, 0 steals, 0 blocks is not great. 38% on 21 attempts is bad as well. And he has really suffered through the efficiency, but not as much as Miles Bridges. Oh, yeah. Bridges, 15 and 10 in 39 minutes. They are playing him a ton, but he cannot do anything good at the moment. 33% shooting, 2 of 3 from the line. You should have tried to sell high on him when he was flying at a top 25 level, understanding there's the two-game playoff week coming. You can't at the moment while he's struggling. Um, Big Richard Richards had nine points, eight rebounds in 27 minutes. Not a very strong game. The rebounds are good. The field goal percentage is good. Maintains rosterability in 12s, though. And Cody Martin had five assists to go with five points. No steals, unfortunately, but he did have two blocks. And he is a 12-team league option. Under the right circumstance for the right team, that might be your team. It also might not be your team. The next one we look at is the Utah Jazz taking on the Orlando Magic. Uh-huh. The Magic welcomed back Paolo Banquero. He moved back into the starting lineup and Caleb Houston went back to the bench. Not a surprise there. The Magic win at 115-107, the final score. Keontae George, 19-3-9, two threes, one steal, one must roster. He just got to be rostered. There are going to be issues at times. Absolutely there are. He's going to have bad shooting nights. Don't care. Just needs to be rostered. The Baptist played 36 minutes. John Collins. There was no Walker Kessler in this one, so that's important. Don't know how long Kessler's going to be out. Um, interestingly, Otto Porter did not get bought out. Thought he was going to get bought out to go sign with the contender. He won't play for the Jazz. I'm not really sure what's going to go on there. Uh, Collins had 9, 10, and 10 steal in a block. It's been a very strong run from Collins here. I don't know how long he lasts in terms of this team who do seem to be just throttling things back. But at the moment, good numbers. And Taylor Hendricks is getting better. It's incremental, but it's there. 27 minutes, 10 and 7, two threes, one steal, 146th ranked player last two weeks in 25 minutes. That's 14 team rosterable guy. It's 12 team luxury stash, who I think will be a 12 team must roster later on. Markinen struggling, 18 points, 40% shooting, lower usage, no peripherals really. We get the feeling that he's sort of winding it down a little bit as well, which is always the fear with this team. And then Sexton just had a brutal game. 19, 3, and 4 is not brutal, it's good, but bad from the field, bad from the line. 6 of 10 from the line kills you. Uh, Clarko had 5 and 5, like 5 points on 20% is terrible, but he had 7 assists and 2 steals. We know what he does. He's going to have up and down shooting nights. The assists are a nice little surprise to be sure for Jordy, and he can be rostered, but he doesn't have to be rostered. For the Magic, good bounce back, or good return actually from Bunkero. 35 minutes, 29, 9, and 6. The unfortunate thing is only 73 from the line, but otherwise great. And Wagner had 14, 3, and 6 with two steals and two blocks. Let's talk about some of the sort of debatable guys. Like one of them is Wendell Carter Jr. Get that garbage out of here! 6 and 5 in 22 minutes. The other one is Michael Fultz. Get that garbage out of here! 7, 3, and 3 with two steals. I guess some people debate the validity of rostering Jalen Suggs. I, I would hold him. 15 points, 4, 3, steal, block, 2 assists. He's not going to blow us away but he should be on a 12-team roster. It was a huge night from Flaming Mo Wagner. 14 and 10 in 26 minutes for him, 86%. Unbelievably, top 100 player over the last two weeks in only 20 minutes. He can do this. 
And this is what is probably a little bit frustrating that when Wendell was out earlier in the season, they kept him playing 17 minutes and they gave Goga all the minutes. Because if Mo Wagner played 28 minutes a night, he would have dominated. Now he's giving us nice bench numbers. Um, yeah, he's a streamable sort of a player. Cole Anthony had 9, 7, and 4, which is fine, but that's deeper league stuff. And Gaz Harris, 13 with three threes. He sort of locked into that um, into that starting role because Mr. Black was out of the rotation. He has been um, underwhelming, I would say, so far this season, Anthony Black. Let us go on to the next game. It was a pretty significant blowout, this one. The Nets, they do the blowing, giggity. Of the Atlanta Hawks, 124-97. For the Hawks, no Trey, no Okongwu, obviously. Trent Forrest got converted into a full-time contract, but not in the rotation. So let's start with the guy that is in the rotation, that is the backup point guard, that is probably going to be the one of the more interesting names as we move forward, and that's Kobe Bufkin. Um, Bufkin played 19 minutes, 20 minutes last game, 19 here. 12-3-3 three and three with two threes. It's a luxury stash. It's a 16-team ad. It's moving forwards. And I don't know where this team goes. I don't know what they decide to do. I don't know if they fight for the play-in or, or what they decide they want to do. But at some point, you feel you'll get a little bit more out of Bufkin. Maybe it only gets to 24, which is probably not enough. At the moment, they sit four games ahead of the Nets in the 10th seed. So would they like purposefully lose to enable themselves out of the plane, get the Nets into the plane? And then the Hawks better their draft pick that way. It's four games is a lot. It's tough to tough to um, uh, fall that far, but that's you know, I guess a way you could do that is by uh, by playing Kobe Bufkin a little bit. Like if I have a look at uh, Dunks and Threes predictions of you know, where they finish, they're forty six percent probability to be the ten seed, thirty percent probability to be the nine seed, seventeen to be the eleven seed, and five percent to be the twelve seed. So it's more likely than not that Atlanta does make the play, which limits the upside there, I guess, of Bufkin. But it's one to watch. Um, Capella had seven and six with four blocks, while DeJounte had 28, six and five. They're going to have some really good games here for DeJounte with Trey gone, absolutely. And Jalen Johnson had 14 and five. We saw the illustrations of the problems with both DeAndre Hunter and the depressed penis Sadiq Bay. Bay played 30 minutes. He had six and five. Sadiq Bay over the last two weeks has played 32 minutes a night, and he's not a top 150 player. He's just not very good. He will have hot streaks that, are, that look good, but overall, he's not. You probably can roster him, but I also don't think that you should spill any tears if you needed to drop him. And the same with DeAndre Hunter, who's a very, very... For a guy that's considered a 3 and D wing, for fantasy purposes, he's a scorer only. He's an empty scorer. He had 12 points with zero rebounds, zero assists, one steal, and zero blocks. He hit one three. He shot 50%. He went three or four from the line. But if he doesn't do bulk volume and scoring, if he doesn't get to the line and hit a million of them, there's nothing. There's nothing that he does that's good. And that's why he's always been a bad category league player. At the moment, you roster him. Bogdanovich had 11, 3, and 3, and he shot poorly there as well. I think Hunter, Bogdanovich, and Bay are all 12-team guys, sort of now. But I can very easily see all of them becoming droppable, and that's going to be slightly dependent on the schedule. For the Nets, Cam Johnson went off here. 29 points, 7 triples. I don't think he even played in the fourth quarter. Four assists and two steals. Shot unbelievably. They've got five games next week. Monday, Tuesday, back-to-back. Then they play Thursday. Then they have Saturday, Sunday, back-to-back. I was trying to work this out, and someone said, Josh, there's only one way that you can play five games in a week. And he was true. There is only one way. So that means there's two back-to-backs in there. Does Johnson sit him? I'm not sure. But you want to grab him, and you want to grab Dennis Schroeder, who had 23, 8, and 7 in 27 minutes. uh, 60% shooting. And Ben Simmons, who... Hurt his leg on the weekend. They had a Monday, Tuesday back-to-back, and I called them insane for playing them on the Monday when they could have sat him on the Monday, given him an extra day of recovery, and then played on the Tuesday. But no, no, the idiots in charge, he decided to play him on the Monday. And then he sat Tuesday, and now he's hurt again on Thursday. What are you guys doing? I'm not saying that playing him one day early caused the injury to flare back up, but I'm also not ruling it out. Get that garbage out of here. The lack of logic sometimes from these teams is is mind-blowing. Anyway, Simmons. Yeah, drop him. That's what Jack said. What we got here is an illustration of how Dayron Sharp can be very interesting. 12 and 8, 4 assists, 2 threes he hit. Are we doing this now, are we, big fella? All right. Steal on a block, 71%. Five games next week. If Sharpie plays 20 a night, that's an unbelievably easy 12-team ad. He probably won't. But I, I don't mind an ad of him at all with five games. Because Claxton sucks now. Five and eight, 17%. Something really smells on this team. 
there's something terrible going on in the locker room. Was it the Jacques Vaughn firing? Was it them saying, hey, Claxton, we're not re-signing you next season? I don't know. Something is way off. Like even Bridges, again, was bad. 15, 7, and 5. And that's for in a game where they smashed. Like he was, he's down 218th over the last two weeks, Mikhail Bridges. Dennis Smith was good with 10 points. He might be a 12-team ad for next week. But yeah, I'd rather add um, Sharp and Schroeder and Johnson. Finney Smith had 7 points in 27 minutes there as well. But yeah, something is... Uh, even though they won by 30 points, there's this stuff that's off with that team, like in a big way as well. Today's episode is also brought to you by Prize Picks. What is Prize Picks? Well, Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. It's the easiest and the most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And on Prize Picks at the moment, it's demon time. Don't have to sneak off into the bathroom to get your phone out. For this demon time, you just need to go in there and win up to 100 times your money. With as little as four correct picks, you can turn $10 into 1,000. Demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play at prize picks. Squares marked with the red demons or the green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times on your money with as little as four correct picks. So go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NBA. Use the code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA. The code is locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Price picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Okay. Let's go to the next game. It is the Golden State Warriors and your New York Knickerbockers for the Knicks. Hartenstein returned, so Jericho Sims went to the bench. The burner, Jalen Brunson, he was back. So Juice McBride moved to the bench as well. Not overly uh, not overly confusing or um, unexpected there. But the Warriors win on the road. They're looking much better at the moment. 110-99 is the final score in this one on the Warriors side. The bucket, John Kaminga, 25-8. Two assists, two steals, two blocks. Shout out Richie Benno. He played 30 minutes and he shot 63%. We know he'd been struggling, but this is a good get back on track game. Steph had 31 and 11 rebounds with eight threes. Awesome. And Chris Paul had now has seven steals in his first two, game, yeah, first two games back. He had 11, four, and six here with three steals. Looked awesome in these two games in limited minutes. Not sure he's going to be that good every game, but yeah, that's great. Clay was fine. 16 points with four threes, but of course it took 16 shots to get there. And didn't even tickle the edges of the assists, steals, or blocks columns. And that's why he is a tough guy to consider a must roster. You probably can roster him, but I don't think you have to. Well, I think we can, unfortunately, Jack Pajemski. Get that garbage out of here! Not just because he had two points on 17%. He still played 32 minutes, but two, three, and four with a steal. There's not enough for him to do. There's too many issues with efficiency and needs a couple of guys out, I think, to, to get him back in there. Moses Moody started in place of Wiggins. He had eight points in 26 minutes. We're looking very, very deep, and that's it. Well, Draymond had uh, seven and 10 with six assists. Solid enough from Draymond. I know he's been dropped in some spots, Draymond, which is a bit silly. He shouldn't have been. Just go and uh, roster him if that's the case. And we're still running this. Sharic, Looney, and Jackson Davis all coming off the bench. Kerr needs to sort that out. Why are we running three centers off the bench? It doesn't make a lot of sense. Hopefully, he fixes that up. For the Knicks... Lots of questions here. Let's talk about Josh Hart, who played all but 50 seconds of this game. Tom Thibodeau settled down. That is insane. And was it because he was awesome? They shot 24% from the field. 14, 18, and 7. Now, Josh Hart does awesome things in other areas. He's also a minus 11. He had two steals. He's on a real hot streak at the moment because he's playing every minute in the world. And I don't know when Randall, if Randall, is coming back. I don't know when uh, Ananobi is still a few weeks away. So you've got value coming here of Hart, but man, there's a lot of minutes to get here. Brunson returned, had 27-5-5 five and five with four threes, took a lot of shots. Cool. But we also got a lot of Juice McBride minutes, way more than I thought. 22 minutes for him. He had 14-2-1 with three steals. That's a better game than when he started in place of Brunson. I don't expect him to get those minutes and cross over with Brunson that much every game, but encouraging. Or good. Good just to, to watch. Anyway, the Big Ragu had 16 and 7, Dante DiVincenzo, but shot 29%. And I tell you what, this is what I said earlier about the waiver wire. Why were people adding Boyan Bogdanovic? Get that garbage out of here! Four points, 18 minutes, 0 of 7 shooting. Thibodeau does not like playing him. I think that's relatively clear. So let's talk centers. Hartenstein started next to Precious Achua. 
both were bad. In fact, Achua was worse. Hartenstein played 20 minutes. He had six points, six rebounds, two assists, 40% shooting. I've inundated with people saying, I'm going to drop him. You do you, boo. That's fine. I won't. You can drop him. He played poorly in this game. Absolutely, he did. He was a minus 17, minus 18. He got yanked pretty early. That will happen. He's dealing with the Achilles stuff. I know this. But this didn't happen because Achua was outplaying him. Precious played only 26 minutes. It was a minus 12. And we are like, we are seeing the minutes tumble in real time for Precious. Remember when he was getting 43 a night and then it was down to 35 and now 26. We're still holding Precious. We're still holding Hartenstein. Got to have a little bit of patience here. Jericho Sims had 10 and 5 in his 22 minutes. I'm not really reacting to that. Yes, it has not been good for Hartenstein. He's 169th over the last two weeks in only 20 minutes a game. Achua is 153rd in 34 minutes a game over the same time frame. I have pretty strong confidence in Hartenstein getting minutes back up. The Achilles is my worry. It's not really him as a player or the production. And this game doesn't... like It's not good, obviously, but it doesn't completely scare me away. Let's go on to the next one. Stunning result. The Spurs beat the Thunder. 132-118. Chet, 23-7-5. Another strong, strong game. Remains top 10 over the last two weeks. Shea, 31-6-3. Great shooting. Great free throws. Fantastic game again. But he was a minus 7. The Bronco, 33 minutes. 26-6-3. 56% shooting. A minus 17. Chet was a minus 10. These are all good individual numbers. Just didn't translate to good on-court production. Tay Watt was also not good. Josh Giddy. Get that garbage out of here. He Richie Benno, but in the bad way. Two points, two rebounds, and two assists, while Gordon Hayward went scoreless in 12 minutes. Get that garbage out of here. It's just obviously not happening for Hayward here. It's easiest drop ever. I thought he would play way more than this, but no. Uh, Lou Dort, eight points on 38%. No steals, no blocks, no assists. Get that garbage out of here. Well, Kaysen Wallace had four steals and three assists, and that's fine. But when, um, yeah, when your big guys are putting up numbers, but it's not really impacting winning, and Giddy struggles this much, it's going to be hard. It's not a good game overall. It's not they didn't play well um, because they were matched up against the the. Uh, what, do I, what do I even do with this guy? Wembenyama, thirty two minutes, twenty eight, thirteen and seven, five threes, two steals, five blocks. Like come on, he's already the seventh round player this season. Where are you picking him? Top, th- He's definitely top three. Jokic, Shea, Wemby next year. Maybe Don- maybe Doncic? Don't know. Vassell also starting to turn into a beast. 28, 3 and 9, 1 steal and 2 blocks. And Trey Jones, who'd been struggling a little bit, had 17, 6 and 8. Good numbers from all of those guys. We also got Jeremy Sohan. Like, what the hell do I do with this? Didn't old mate get benched last game and score zero points? Well, he had 21 and 10 here in 32 minutes. Remember, if you add him after this, you don't get this game. <sighs> Look, I was going to say his role's secure. It sort of is, but it sort of isn't. It's frustrating. He's fine to stream, but that's about it. While we went back to the good old Keldon Johnson games of 10, 2, and 4 on 30%, and he is not a 12-team league player. Get that garbage out of here. Good game from Zach Collins, 13, 5, and 5, but we don't roster him in 12s, even though he's still being held in 12-team leagues, and I do not know why. And Bubble Champagne had six points in his 19 minutes. Overall, huge win for the Spurs. Disappointing loss for the Thunder. And Wembenyama paired with Vassal. They get someone else in there. Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, we'll see what happens. But they um, they look pretty good. They look In this one, anyway. They look pretty good in this one. The next game, the Phoenix Suns host the Houston Rockets. The Suns win at 110-105. Um... Some interesting results here. No lineup changes from the last game. Otherwise, I would have put the lineup change graphic up. You know how that rolls. For for Houston, it was Jollibee time. Jollibee Jalen, 39 minutes, 34 and 5, 7 triples and 3 steals. Now, we shot a lot, 27 times. Shout out to Cam Thomas. He hit only 37% of them, but that is a huge usage game and put together some good numbers. But... The problem is, look what it took. 39 minutes. It took 27 shots, which is 11 more than anybody else. It's 34 usage. The three steals are nice for sure. But to me, he still remains a points league only guy. But what it also did do is it completely killed Amen Thompson. Get that garbage out of here! 
Now, Thompson killed himself a little bit. He had three fouls in about five minutes. He ended up with four fouls and played only 10 minutes. He went scoreless. He had four rebounds. He had two steals. You, you could drop him. Like, that minutes trend is not what you want. If it goes the other way, go back and re-add him. Van Vliet, after some stinkers, had a good one as well. 21-6-5. and five. Didn't shoot well. Neither did anyone on this team. They shot 34% from the field. That's disgusting. Jabari Smith had 11-16 and 16 with a steal and a block on 27%. Now, I wonder, this team is just uh, spiraling downwards. Will they... Like, I, I, they don't feel like a shutdown team to me. And well, who would they shut down? Like, Jabari... Not, not even Jabari. Like, Van Vliet? They don't really feel like a shutdown team, but they are going in the wrong direction. Speaking of the wrong direction, Dylan Brooks somehow was a worse shooter than everybody else. 27%, 6 points, 8 rebounds. He is only a um, stream guy while it was a stinker from the delicate dancer. He is struggling at the moment, El Prince Shingun. He only played 23 minutes. He fouled out, and then as he fouled out, he got ejected. He had 8 points with 4 assists. He's really struggling. Now, he's been great this season, but it has been a poor second half so far. Cam Whitmore did his thing, and he played a lot more minutes with the limitations there of Shingun and with the men as well. 27 minutes for Whitmore, 14 and 8. But he just does require those minutes. And on an every night basis, I don't think he's going to get those. Streaming for points, absolutely no problem. But as a must roster guy, I don't see it. I'm looking at the men Thompson's advanced roster number, 93%. Guys, move on. What about Tari Eason at 71%? Also, guys, move on. For the Suns, no Brad Beal, no Eric Gordon, no Nasir Little. Beal, yeah, look, obviously they're treating that hamstring injury seriously, but their next game is a back-to-back. So he's not playing both of those, no chance. And I would say Eric Gordon probably doesn't play both of those either. Booker had 35-7 and seven with six triples. Durant had 24-7-6 and six on 7-10 seven of 10 from the line. But it was another good game from the Basmati man, Royce O'Neal. 37 minutes, 11-6-7, and seven, three steals and a block. Now, O'Neal's numbers are great. He is 82nd over the last two weeks in 30 minutes a night, but... There are plenty of people who really love Royce O'Neal for fantasy. One of them is not talking to you at the moment. And I think opinions could be relatively split on his value. If I had Royce O'Neal and I could still trade, I'd definitely try to find someone who thinks that he is the answer. Because he's not, I don't think. Because again, we are talking 33 minutes of Beal, 23 minimum minutes of Eric Gordon that need to come back. And O'Neal will not start and play 37 minutes a night is my guess. He still shot poorly. 30%. 30%. The three steals and a block are great. The assists are unbelievably good. But these opportunities just aren't there always. So for now, we roll with it. That's it. Bob Ball played 26 minutes, so we got the same roll, but he had seven and four with nothing else. Because again, he is only a fringe guy at the moment to stream in while Beal and Gordon are out. And when they return, we do not care about Bob Ball for fantasy. Uh, Stinker from... Grayson Allen, six points, four, four rebounds, 22%. And Nurkic had 16 and 13. He fouled out as well. He had three blocks, just horrible shooting. Eight of 16 from the line. Now, Nurkic can be bad from the line, but you don't expect to get absolutely detonated like that. That is uh, really a huge negative. But overall, they get the win, um, but you know, not without some concerns. All right, let's, let's do the next one. The Miami Heat, Denver Nuggets, finals rematch. Thomas Bryant, ring night. The Nuggets win it 103-97. The uh, Heat were without Thomas Bryan. He was suspended. No Tyler Hero. Josh Richardson. Kevin Love was out as well. Duncan Robinson. The Heat initially put out a lineup that had DeLon Wright starting. And they corrected it. And Duncan Robinson started. He played 36 minutes. He had 12 points, two threes, three assists, and three steals. As long as Hero is out, we use Robinson. And then we can maybe wait a game and then drop him after that. Adebayo had 22-8, and eight, while Rogier had 19-5-4. and four. Good numbers there. Not very often you get a Jimmy Butler game where he kills you in both percentages. He played 40 minutes. He had 21 and 7, but 41 from the field and 6 of 9 from the line. He'd been playing really well. That's just not ideal. Jaime Jaquez had 3 points in 27 minutes. He did have 5 assists and 2 steals, but all of the things that I was worried about with him have, after the first 6 weeks have been there. He can't shoot. 20% from the field. He was 1 of 2 from the line. The usage is down. The minutes are down. You jack him. Get that garbage out of here. It was a solid game from Caleb Martin. I think we put him more into the 14-team zone. He had 13 and 9, while Jovic, little Chungus, played more. 25 minutes, 7 and 6. Dolan Wright, 3 minutes only. Obviously not a key part of the rotation, because Hero wasn't even there. And Haywood Highsmith, also back out of the rotation. Zero minutes for him. For the Nuggets, let's start with the big one. Jamal Murray sprained his ankle in the first half, did not return. He had 6 points with 2 triples. Uh, he just can't seem to stay healthy in a regular season at the moment. There's always something happening. He's had a couple of leg issues this season already. Um, 
yeah, like that. I think he's going to miss some time. I don't know how long, but I think he'll miss some time. Nothing too serious, but hopefully not too long. You could say that Reggie Jackson will be the starter because you'll be right. He played 29 minutes. He had six points, though, on 30% shooting with two rebounds and two assists because Reggie Jackson, even at his best, even at a team where he was running high usage, he was not a very good fantasy player. You can add him. He will have some good stretches, absolutely. But I don't think that it's this absolute no-brainer that he's just going to dominate and put up good numbers. He might, but it's also he's just not that good. KCP will get more touches, so it's a good opportunity to get him back going. 18 points, 4-3, steal and a block. Jokic had 18, 11, and 7 with two blocks, and Gordon had 16 and 9 with three steals. But it was a big game from Michael Ponder. We know that the inconsistency for him is all over the shop, but 30 and 11, two steals, two blocks, four triples, 52%. That is an excellent game. Their bench, though, ugh, Christian Brown had two points. Peyton Watson was scoreless. Just bad stuff from those guys. Not, uh, not impressive at all. Let's go on to the final game of the day. This one went to overtime. The Wizards pushed the uh, the Lakers, couldn't quite get there in the end. We did have a change in the lineup. Denny Avdia returned, and it wasn't Landry Shamet that moved to the bench. Of course not. It was Corey Kispert for whatever reason, but that didn't really matter because uh, Shamet was a starter really in name only, didn't play those big minutes. Uh, but Denny was back, and that's good if you've got Denny. The Lakers win at 134-131, the final score. Kuzma, 20-10, and 10, four assists, three blocks, bad shooting, four threes. Overall, really good fantasy game. As it was for your mate, Jordan Poole. 34 points, five threes, seven assists, 26 shots, 50% shooting, three or four from the line, 35 usage. I am unbelievably annoyed I am sort of happy, but not really. I'm just annoyed because this is exactly why I thought Jordan Poole could be a top 50 player this season. Huge usage, good minutes, assists. He's doing everything that I thought, except for the first 60 games, he was plodding around like he was bloody Landry Shamet. If Jordan Poole sits on your waiver wire, he is a very, very clear must roster player. And this is what we, I've said about him all season. If you want to drop him, that's all good. I get it. The frustrations are there. But is there anyone on your wire with higher upside? The answer now is obviously no. right? And I don't expect Jordan Poole is going to be a 50% shooter. I don't. But these are like, what, five or six games in a row of 30% of usage? This is what I expected. Four-month delay. But we're here, sort of. 43 minutes for Denny Avdia. That's a lot of minutes, man. First game back. 15 and 15 is pretty good, but look how low that usage is. 13%. He had five assists. He shot 50%. We talked about how he was putting up really strong numbers on the back of unsustainable shooting. We'll see where he settles in now. And Kispert, I do think we add Corey Kispert. 20 points, six rebounds, six assists. It does help that Bilal Kulabali was out, but I think Kispert's worth grabbing. And so is Marvin Bagley. 34 minutes, 21 and four with two blocks, 77%. Must roster player. Tyus Jones sort of faded away a little bit there. Eight points, 11 assists, and two steals, but still really strong. And Shamit did his best Johnny Davis impersonation. He had four points on 29%. For the Lakers, Davis was great. 40 and 15, four assists, one steal, three blocks. LeBron, on a back-to-back after yesterday's ridiculousness. 39 minutes, 31, 4 and 9. This guy is, how is he doing it? How? D'Angelo Russell, 44 minutes, 22, 6 and 5, and Reeves had 12, 6 and 4. And the real Rui Hachimura showed himself again. 8 and 7 in 35 minutes. He's fine to stream, but he's not a must roster guy. Neither is Spencer Dinwiddie. Get that garbage out of here. 10 points in 26 minutes. He only took the five shots, but uh, yeah, we're not rostering him. And we actually got Cameron Dish kicked out of the rotation. W. Well, I mean, he played four minutes and then they said no. Why they have persisted with him all season, I have no idea. Max Christie got those minutes as he should continue to do, but do I trust pockets at all? Not really. Not really. Let's um, let's talk streams of the day. Let's recap it because there were some okay results, as there is usually. There were some bad results, as there is usually. The 10-team stream of the day was Trey Mann. Eh, 9, 7, and 4 with two steals. Not great. Should be rostered. The 12-team stream of the day was the speaker, Keontae George. Love this. 19, 3, and 9 with a steal. Awesome. The 14-team stream was Bold Bold. 7 and 4 with nothing else because he is not Victor Weminyama. He is Bold Bold. The 16-team stream of the day was Taylor Hendricks, and I think this is a huge W as well. I think he's almost a, he's a 14-team league ad. 10 and 7, assist and a steal. Trey Mann was your points league stream, 28.4. For Yahoo and for ESPN, 29 points, which, again, 
Probably could have found a better one out there, but that's totally reasonable. It's fine. They're okay numbers. They're just not eye-poppingly great. Let us um, let us take a crack now at the monstrous line of the night. I feel like I'm missing something, but I don't think I am. Anyway, monstrous line of the night, the best performance of the day. Not overly controversial, I don't think, to say that the monstrous line of the night is also the young gun of the night because this man is just... I don't know. He's just something else at the moment, isn't he, Victor Wembanyama? 28, 13, and 7. Two steals, five blocks. What's this? I think this is the fourth or fifth time he's had five blocks in the last six games. You talk about how I've, I've crit- and I have, rightfully so, where people have told me, ah, you've got to draft Walker Kessler. He wins you blocks by himself. That was a lie. Obviously not true. Jaron wins you blocks by himself. A lie. Not true. This guy might. This actually, if you want to tell me that you draft Victor Wembanyama because he wins you blocks by himself, he might. That's it's not far off. Five blocks a game is different to 2.4 or three. It's just stupid what's happening with this guy at the moment. The waiver wire line of the night, the best performer for a player rostered under 50% of the league. It is a rookie um, extravaganza here because Keontae George is available in over 50% of leagues. 19 points, three rebounds, and nine assists. For the speaker, and lastly, for the awards, we go to the dud of the night. Who is the worst performer of the day? Who is highly rostered? And in the end, we do end up heading down to the Magic Kingdom, and it is Wendell Carter Jr., six points and five rebounds. Low minutes and just not needed to be rostered in 12-team formats. Your top six players of the day. Obviously, number one is Victor Wembenyama, if I can bring the right slide up. Um, it was actually pretty close. Anthony Davis almost got him. Davis comes in at number two, followed by Michael Ponder Jr., Devin Vassell and Devin Booker, and then Jordan Poole slides in at number six. I tweeted this out. I said, man, I cannot wait for Jordan Poole to be a top 10 player during the fantasy playoffs. And I know that I've got an audience that reads this stuff and can't always read what I'm trying to say. I thought it would have been relatively um, obvious that it was sarcasm, but apparently not. I do think he's going to be pretty strong and should be rostered. Top 10 is not what we're thinking. Like, no, 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 not, not at all. Not at all. Um, the top six players rostered under 50% of the leagues. Number one was Keontae George, followed by Royce O'Neal. As long as Beal is out, we can use Royce. Uh, Corey Kispert, I think he's worth an ad. Dayron Sharp, five games next week, I'm in. Jeremy Sohan, I don't trust that. And Contavious Caldwell-Pope, you can look at him. Now, they said that Jamal is going to travel with the team to LA. They'll give it a go. It sounded like he's probably more doubtful than questionable. Um, and that probably that does help Contavious if Jamal Murray is out. Lastly, we look at the top six players in Yahoo Points Leagues. Number one there is Anthony Davis. He pipped Wemby there. Porter gets three, Devin Vassell four, Booker five. And Josh, the hitman heart, comes in at number six. Let's just look at some ad options here. I think Reggie Jackson's worth a spec ad in certain spots. Trey Mann should be grabbed with the Lamello Ball News. Royce O'Neal with Bradley Beal's uncertainty across the back-to-back is totally fine. And in terms of jacking, guys... Get that garbage out of here! Josh Giddy and Amen Thompson, not guys that I think you need to just um, absolutely anchor down onto your standard league roster. I don't think that's necessary to do. So that is the end of Thursday with those eight games on. Don't forget, you are here, you're on the video side, or you might be on the audio side. And if you are, you just got a double bang and you come across the other one, you give it a thumbs up, your comment, your bell, your five-star review, all of that stuff. Hope your matchup is going well this week. Also remember, playoffs for Locked On Fantasy Basketball Bowl start next week. And you've got two weeks before the big Battle Royale. All waiver moves can be made until you head to the Battle Royale. Everything remains the same until we hit that Battle Royale. Guys, that does it for us. We are done here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. See ya.